Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to the Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Like we say, five panelists, five topical issues, no holds bar. In other words, we tell it like it is. I'll be looking at the intendment of the law in the matter of INEC, Bayesa, and the election tribunal. Rookie all the way from Canada, similarly be speaking to our own constituents in the urgent matters of Nigerian emergency service. And she seems to be saying, where is it when you need it? Wait to hear that. Chuka appeals to our shunning, ostentatious, and returning to the simpler pleasure in life. Chuka will dare your back anyhow. Ikene raises the alarm and says, when trust is lost, the center cannot hold. Well, that's if her assessment of things is to be trusted anyway. And Sedu, I know I will trust this one, also profiles another relationship that has been rocked by issues of trust, the MBA, and the recent Aerofy on invitation. And definitely, you know I have a lot to say on that. You can see from the lineup, we are not averse to rocking the boat in the interest of genuine stability. I'm up first, definitely after the break. According to Lord Denning, Master of the Roads, MR, when a judge sits on trial, the judge is on trial. INEC, Baesa, and election tribunals. That the governorship election in Baeza has been a subject of litigation controversy, even after the Supreme Court judgment disqualifying the APC candidate, wherein PDP candidate became the beneficiary, is no longer news. That's old news. However, what became news was that the governorship election petition tribunal sitting in, Baeza, in Abuja ordered INEC to conduct another governorship election in Baeza on an alleged exclusion of the political party ANDP. INEC had argued that the advanced Nigerian Democratic Party, that's the NDP's nomination for the election, was invalid because, as at the time of the submission of the governorship candidate's name, that he was not of age as he was 34 years old, having been born on the 10th of February 1995. And by virtue of Section 177, Paragraph B of the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended, it makes it mandatory for a candidate for such office to attain the age of 35 years before he or she can be eligible to contest for election. The party, however, on the September 21st, 2019, while acknowledging the invalidity of his candidates or the nomination, attempted to substitute the underage candidate with one Miss Inouye Judith, who also was said to be underage by the election petition tribunal. But the party was informed by INEC by virtue, that by virtue of our election timetable, released on the 16th of May 2019, and the time for substitution of candidate has lapsed. But by letter dated 3rd of October 2019, the party threatened to go to court if its candidate was not reinstated. The candidate was neither reinstated by INEC, nor did the party go to court to challenge the decision. Even though the provisions of section 285, subsection 14, paragraph C, of the, constitution of, of the 1999 constitution as amended, that's the fourth alteration, defines the above scenario as a pre-election matters and admonish parties to approach the court within 40 days from the time of the, the course of action arose. The party, however, approached the tribunal, that's by 100 and something days after the election and declaration of APC as winner, only to withdraw the petition in the alleged interest of Baeza thereafter. And then subsequently filed another petition, immediately the Supreme Court's judgment invalidating the candidature of the APC for which the PDP became beneficiary. Somebody then asks, 
Maybe the interest of Baeza was extinguished by the Supreme Court's judgment. I don't know. Maybe you know. However, my worry is that with this tribunal judgment, the implication, therefore, is that even if a certified lunatic, an underage minor, a foreigner, or a criminal convicted by a court of competent jurisdiction is nominated by a political party, INEC does not have the powers to declare the nomination invalid unless and until someone goes to court to challenge such nomination. What if nobody challenges it? Then, unfortunately, a lunatic, a minor, a convict, or even a foreigner can then become a governor or president in Nigeria. I dare say that cannot be the spirit of the law, nor the intent of the drafters. And yet, the judges are learned jurists, and I will must all coerce as your lordship pleases. I will therefore advocate that the NJC should not allow such interpretation to be used to destroy our democracy, as the wordings of section 285, subsection 14, paragraph C of the Constitution, while defining the meaning of pre-election matter is clear enough for even a layman to understand. It says, a political party challenging the actions, decisions, or activities of INEC, disqualifying a candidate from participating in an election, or a complaint that the provision of the Electoral Act or any other applicable law has not been complied with by INEC in respect of the nomination of candidates of political party or for an election must approach the court within 14 days. So therefore, if INEC cannot render a nomination invalid, why then did the above provision request parties to go to court if INEC disqualifies their candidates? As the law, like I said, I believe that the law will never intend INEC as an administrative body, not to have power to take administrative actions to enforce the Constitution or its own guideline. As doing that, we not only further overburden the court, but we render INEC ineffective, considering the knack by our politicians to observe the law in breach. Well, mind you, my advocacy is not to sit here on appeal over a decision of the tribunal, but according to Lord Denning, to look at the intendment of the law with you, even though you all have all coerced as the court pleases. Yeah, I mean, Libras, I'll step in here because um, what you call the intendment of law, I remember I did an advocacy once looking at the mischief, and that's, that's what it says to me. We all know what is right. I think you've pointed out several, do you say glaring loopholes here that just show you that there's a discord. People are just playing mischief, they're playing footloose, because as you saw, the role of the ANRP was like a pawn, you know? So yeah. when things seem to be going their way, they will hold back. When things are not going the way of the party they were used to sort of weighing on there to the advantage, they'll step in, which is why they fell short of the 14-day thing. It caught them out. So, but now it's no secret that these judges are, in a way, being used as pawns. The problem we now face is how do we hold them accountable to such an extent that if they are found to be playing this, because what you pointed out, I'm sure most people can make that connection. But now, how do we hold them accountable so that they'll be afraid to play games like this? Because, you know, these other elections are coming up at those state, and we're going to see even more of this play out. Yeah. How do we block those loopholes so that they'll be afraid to do something so open like this? Because it's like, and you have to explain, how is it that a Supreme Court ruling can be overturned by, I don't understand. <laughs> you know, so something is just the off, off point here, and it makes me very concerned. Because if the judges can be relied upon or can be held accountable, then what else are we saying now? I, I really don't know how are we going to get this thing right. I'm really stuck here, uh, so I'm throwing it out there. I, I think um, there's some political parties that their strategy basically is wait for the election, you know, yeah, and then yeah, that's they true. fight the real battle at the courts yeah, the court that, where they know that they're stops. probably and looking mm. for technicalities. So to I think I just there. And at the end of the day, the eventual losers are the electorate because uh, the people of Bayels had spoken. Right? They had a candidate that they voted for. There was somebody that won, but on technical grounds, he lost that election. Okay. And somebody else took, took, it. Yeah. You know, took the, uh, the uh, gubernatorial mm -hmm. position. Now we're having that issue play out again now. Mm -hmm. So those guys have not gone to sleep. They are using every the same means, technical the same technical, uh, technicalities yeah. you know, to get the, to get uh, the other man out again. The other man out, exactly. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see. Um, but for me, I'm thinking, what are the timelines? How can you stipulate 14 days and then 150 days later you can still bring that same matter? I think you need to hold your laws um, literally as you said they, they are. Like, like um, um, Sarah said, you're using the um, loopholes 
to get into the game. Yeah. These are political parties, A N D P or, or whatever they call themselves, yeah. probably know they can't win an election in Biosa State. And so all they have to do is to align to whoever they think will win and get either positions in the cabinet or, or what have you. And when they have lost out, then they now have to go and challenge the other party because they think that's their only game, uh, you know, a skin in the game or whatever. And of course, maybe PDP people will now settle them. Now, as you said, um, the law. So these, um, these judges, how are they making these decisions? Are they really free, doing it free and fairly? Or are they, um, you know, as one um, guru would say, pohoing to the cotoin of the people who are seeing them behind? Are these people corrupt? Because you're wondering, the law is very, very clear to see. And you have made guidelines, you have made them stipulations of how people can go and object to any, any, um, any uh, shortfall for their candidacy. So why are they coming out now? What is, what is really going on? So are the judiciary biased? And why are they biased? And even the um, political parties, are they really being honest? And who's really losing? Like um, I said, it's probably the, um, the people of bias at state. How can you do an election again? We all know the cost of an election. Okay. Shuka, do you want to say something quickly? No, no, no. I just think that this is just Nigeria playing out, sadly. And uh, Bielsa is just being made to look stupid. The people of Bielsa are just being made to look stupid. Why? Um, <laughs> you can't say uh, You know that. You know the word uh, our friend has uh, yeah. made very famous. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very sad. And uh, um, this is... if you would want to ask, maybe somebody's bankrolling this. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, calling out societal dysfunctionalities is not a responsibility we take lightly here. Rookie re rises to the challenge after the break. If we don't call out our societal failures, we may soon become casualties of the same. Emergency Medical Service, EMS, who needs it and why? Is it not time for millions of Nigerians to demand and receive what is literally life-saving intervention in emerging ways? I've been on this advocate platform in the past to talk about our grossly underfunded, shambolic, healthcare systems in Nigeria. I advocate for health once again, this time focusing on our emergency medical service or so their lack of data, costing millions of lives annually. In Nigeria today, a gunshot wound victim or an accident victim, they are not treated um, in many a health facility, whether because of asking for payment or a police report, conditions that have historically seen patients being turned away with unfavorable outcomes, even when EMS or road safety actually brought them there alive. I lost five friends, all eight between 50 to 55 years recently, for one reason or the other, and some of the deaths definitely could have been prevented if the EMS had worked in Nigeria. One person actually called me from a far away location to say, how do I administer CPR to her while waiting for help to come? How heartbreaking. So, as a physician, this hurts deeply. As a politician, of course, can, are we helpless? No, because we can actually do something about this. Our horrific statistics and our high crude death rates of more than 10,000, which is really, really high. And um, because we cannot make policies um, to change a lot of Nigerians, of course we can. So as we are saying in medicine, prevention is actually not better, but actually cheaper than cure. Yet, while during an emergency, how does the healthcare system respond in Nigeria? Who do you call when you fall? In 2009, our Honorable Minister of Health, Professor Babantu de Osuriti Main, um, ON, rest in peace, um, said in a white paper, um, National Strategic Health Development and Plan Framework for Nigeria 2009 to 2015, that he would focus on eight priorities for the health of Nigerians. And these are um, where leadership and governance for health, health service delivery, human resources for health, health financing, health information system, community ownership and participation, partnerships for health development and research for health. Conspicuously, of course, where was EMS? It was not there. Professor Oshoti Main, rest in peace, came to Canada in 2010 and I asked him in Ottawa, why no EMS, sir? He agreed, but whose side? as my friend Mrs. O's father would say. In 2020, we are still far, far away from those 20, um, 2009 goals. And amid a global pandemic, we actually saw 
our health care, um, our health budget in Nigeria slashed. In a in a meeting of um, the National Council of Health a while ago, ambulance um, operation guidelines and call numbers were decided. Most importantly, a provision was made to the national budget to establish a regular source of funding for EMS in our country, Nigeria. And to that, I say woohoo, because this is a great achievement. But as a special advisor in um, Delta State, where I worked from 2011 uh, to 2012 to the governor, we had EMS established in Delta State. But of course, due to funding, this did not survive to the uh, next government. I'm not really sure what they're doing now. The invaluable need for effective EMS in Nigeria was brought to light when in April 2016, six medical doctors traveling to a conference lost their lives in a bus accident um, somewhere in, in the north. And um, the Federal Road Safety um, arrived to the um, accident um, um, scene and they, they weren't trained, of course, and so they huddled victims into a van and um, subsequently there were even more deaths. Now, the victims um, reached a government-owned hospital alive, but many could not receive the treatment because the hospital wasn't prepared for such an emergency. And these were doctors who knew exactly what they needed, and some of them just said, just died on the spot. So my advocacy, therefore, is that there must be a federal government law to standardize emergency health care responses in Nigeria and to have uniform national crisis um, call numbers, such as 911, as we have here in Canada, or 999 in England, to allocate an annual budgetary provision for EMS in our country and for all Nigerians, no matter what state you're in, and for the EMS responders to be well trained and to be able to handle emergencies effectively, stabilize the patients and do the appropriate transfer to the hospital for continuation of care. Let us all remember that all life is sacred and let us stop imagining that we are safer because of our wealth or status in society. A friend, a friend recently was, um, she did, she, well, she may yet do it on the advocates, so I won't give the game away, but she was talking about how the personal is really political, you know, because until you face a health challenge and you're, no matter how rich you think you are, unless, of course, now the borders are opening, but you find yourself cornered in Nigeria where this health system fails you, then that thing you thought you were doing for yourself quickly becomes a political issue. And this same friend is someone who has always advocated that her problem with the way we approach issues in Nigeria is that each person solves it for themselves. They don't see it as an opportunity to try and solve it for others. You know, so here's something you're already mentioning. And, and what I picked up from your, your, uh, your presentation was really that we, we can even start by dealing with sensitizing people as to why human life is valuable in the, in the first place, why we really need to prioritize emergency services. Because if you look at the attitude of people, when you just go to any local uh, tertiary uh, hospital, you see the way they treat people. I've been like, treat you like cattle. So they don't even do triage. They don't do that management of which is more important. And that doesn't cost money. It just takes a, a, an attitude by the staff to recognize that human life is valuable. I, I don't blame them to some extent because the way we live here, we just get by. But if it was a system where people actually understood that human life is valuable, even without more money, the attitude of the people there will show you that if somebody walks in here and is on death's door, the person attending to you is already thinking of how to prioritize you. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a, but without the investment, I think we need to start with, that's my own recommendation, sensitizing people as to the value of emergency services in the first place, why you need to save human life as, as, you know, as a very basic no, minimum. Well, I, 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 can I, I don't think um, you, you can uh, sensitize people where there are no sanctions. Okay. Uh, even if you sensitize people, and then what if they default? Okay. What are the consequences of default? That is where you know, the real issue is. If you sensitize the people, and then you create consequences for action. If a medical doctor, if somebody dies in your hospital, you don't just say, God gives, God has taken. Or, or we tried our best, we are sorry. The board will look at the steps that you took to ensure and so if you set up um, emergency services and then somebody dies, you know, if, if I know that I will suffer for the death of that person, I will do everything possible. But when there are no consequences, you know, we don't even value lives. Look at our roads. And like you said, everybody is a local government. You provide mm -hmm. everything for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and so you get there recently, the president's wife ran to Dubai <laughs> for, treatment. for treatment. And so somebody that can easily go out, mm -hmm. so won't, you know, there won't be consequences because they know they have a leeway out. Mm. You know, and then we, the people that ought to be demanding 
I can run to Seidu and say, bros, my wife is in the hospital. Seidu helps me. I don't know that. It is the government that is supposed to do that. Go yeah, Seidu is playing yeah. government for himself now for me. Mm. And so I leave out government. Mm. So that's where the problem really is. I think, I think we should be a little bit careful because right now, their bodies, you know, they review cases in the hospital. You know, people are actually held, they hold people accountable. Mm. My, my wife is a medical mm. doctor, and I remember when she was doing her internship at uh, Luth. One you know, a lot, One. a lot. No, this is the yeah, practice a... in Luth. You understand? What, 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 what I want to mention here is, look, there's no doubt that our uh, health uh, care system needs an, a, a complete overhaul. However, you should also understand that, look, it's a priority now. Government is faced with education, faced with... So how do you allocate funds? If you understand the value you know chain... we carry the patient no, I'm from coming, first I'm floor trying, to sixth floor in no, I, I, understand, I understand that. If you have a plan, you understand the value chain for that health right. system. You can decide to put your investment in the most important... But you have clarity on what you want to okay. achieve. So you share funds equally. I, I mean, I, I like what Libra said about punishment or sanctions for things. The problem is, is it, is it possible to sanction in a system that is actually broken down anyway? There's, put it this way, the, the, the health system in the country is, is a disaster right now. Uh, Rookie has already said it, that it's shambolic. You can't sanction. So how are you going to Where sanction you no, you can't. somebody that Say doesn't have equipment, doesn't have anything Say going for them? Say said something. You start from somewhere, the small that you have put in place, ensure that there are procedures for enforcing it. And mm. so if the no matter how small, once you start from there, it can mm. you know go beyond that. I just give an instance. We had to carry somebody from first floor to sixth floor in loot. Mm, yeah. Somebody was paid for ensuring that the lifters are As, working. Uh, working. Nothing yeah. was done. Yeah. Somebody was paid to supply yes. generators yes. to That's those not buildings. As well. It's not working and nothing yeah. was done. That's so, what, so, so, Things are little yeah. as little as that. That's one. what I mean by the system is broken down. Okay. So how are you going to sanction anybody? Okay. How will, you know? From top well, to bottom. Well, Rookie is right in that what affects one eventually affects all, since no man is an island. So after the break, I reference a personal experience that has a public lesson. What we view as personal is only closed as such till we share it with others then it assumes a broader reference. So when less is more. Now I came across this photograph uh, that I shot some years ago. You see, I've had some cars in my life, some quite expensive, but none quite as memorable as this silver Kia Picanto. So much did I like this car that I transferred the number plate I, I had on a much more expensive car to it. That number was SS55GWK, and that number signified Ogwashuku in Delta, which is my hometown. I also owned AA55GWK and GG55GWK on other cars, so I carried on this Ogwashuku theme. The Picanto was small. It was unpretentious. It had all one needed. It sent an egalitarian message to others and even beggars on the street would walk past it in search of more expensive cars to seek arms from. Once in a while, when I showed my superior driving prowess to bus drivers, they sent out retaliatory insults about the toy car. But you see, it was such a lovely little thing. I actually had another older one than this one too. Now this car questioned the vanity that can sometimes consume us. It once took us on a trip to Ibadan from Lagos to see my son in a boarding house. And that trip, it seemed like no petrol was consumed. It was that economical. At night, it was a safe bet on the rather unsafe Lagos streets. It had so much character for something so small that I hope care produce another model soon because I must go back there. So the key words Actions and resolutions we need to make here are contentment, compassion, simplicity, confidence, critical thinking, and perhaps most importantly, humility. They say pride comes before a fall, so let's live wisely. I'm waiting for Libras to talk. He's <laughs> <laughs> so smiling like uh, uh, you know that. You know, sir, don't you choke Libras with one knife. <laughs> no, I know no. what he wants to say. Let me say. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Mm. Um, it's, um, 
you, the, the society we live in, it's, um, it's a place where, yes, you want sometimes, you want to desire, you know, you just feel. It, 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 when you're comfortable, it is easy for you to say, small <laughs> is less. <laughs> when you are comfortable. So, like you said, you had bigger cars. Yeah, so you have a but choice. You had a choice. <laughs> and so, just imagine that man who is not comfortable with five children and had to squeeze into one room and parlor and the toilet and kitchen and, you know, a hundred meters away from the house. There is nothing you will tell him about small is better mm. until he has a choice <laughs> to make between that bigger <laughs> apartment <laughs> and then this small one. And, and so for me, the society, really, what society does is, you know, create opportunities that I know I can aspire. If I aspire, I can dream. And then I get to the top, and then you decide, oh, I've, I, I started from small, and I got here, and actually discovered that it is better down there. Mm -hmm. Until you get to that top, you will not appreciate. There's no contentment. The, yes. <laughs> and that's why Big Gate can afford to have all he has, and then I'll say, you know what, I give 95% to charity, and then I want to remain where I am. But if he didn't have that, he would still have the struggle. I will challenge that, but I'm rookie. Let's hear you. <laughs> so, so for me, really, the society provide a level said, playing field. Uh, it was the no, small fair. car, it was inexpensive, but this, the most expensive cars in this world are actually small. The Lamborghini, the Ferraris, and, and what have you. So small is not always um, cheaper. But I, I see Chuka's point that sometimes we go for things that in far in excess of what we need. And... Um, and if for real equity, really, in this world, and Shuka did mention that he had other more expensive cars, we should always try to maximize on, on our economy. For example, 2020, who knew coronavirus would strike? And many people became out to job for, for many, many months. And um, there's no respite for that. And so people start selling their things, um, including probably expensive cars, to be able to, to meet up to expectations or help relatives. So in general, like you said, the moral here being, how do we manage our resources to get the most, the bang out of the box, if you will? How do we be effective doing what we need to do without necessarily being too, too flashy? It's very difficult not to measure success with, with um, ostentatious things, property houses, what have you. But how effective are these things in, in your grave? Okay. We're all going to die for sure and all these things will be left behind. So how do you manage resources and still put out a good message and be safer in, in a society? That is what I took from what um, um, Chuka has said. So um, there, I, there's this personality profile test that I took some time ago, and it exposes you to our different personalities. There are some people that are ostent ostentatious. They like flashy lifestyle, and somehow their businesses could revolve around that kind of lifestyle. So yeah. imagine people in entertainment. So yeah. if, they, if they are driving a $45,000 car, it's not really luxury for them. It's a business, mm -hmm. because their, their lifestyle yeah. is the yes. business. They want to you understand? Whereas yeah. some, there are some personalities you that are very You can't make $100,000 when you drive a $1,000 one, one car. <laughs> Do you understand? So it, it's, it's centered around your kind of person. That it, incidentally, there's one of the personality that they're very, very detailed. Those are the people that dot their I's and cross the T's. Like they, are, they look at fuel <laughs> efficiency. They look yes. at functionality and all of those. So if your personality fits that, you're, you, you find yourself gravitating so towards... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But let me, let me know. Cancel all of that <laughs> okay. because I, you know, it's, I, I, I like Chuka's uh, advocacy because it's intriguing for me, and I don't agree with Libros uh, that you need to first have reached the top. That's the argument people make for covetousness. As no, 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 no. I'm coming. I'm not just open door. Liking small let me, and let me 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 let but he goes on the London bus, one pound fifty. Right. He's in a flashy, he's in a entertainment, but he's making a choice. Now, what I see a lot of times in Nigeria is that when I remember my grandfather, he lived in a house he made himself, a mud house. But that guy had dignity. You can't tell that guy he can't talk to anybody. If that person likes them, come from. That guy had dignity. But, but what we've done, I'm, I'm coming, I'm know, coming, as they say in my village, Anna yeah, what, what we're dealing with here, issues. just wait. What you're dealing with here in Nigeria is that. That's what they call capitalism. That's what obtains a lot in America. We've traded the true value mm -hmm. for things that are not value, and we're making excuses for it. it so it, it's it, not, it, you it, don't it, have it, to it. wait. So what I'm trying to say is that bottom line is that
people need to just learn that wherever they are, there's certain things that are, uh, let me say, eternal to that extent. So, and there's certain things that are easy come, easy go. Money will come, money will go. So the things are eternal, See. invest in those things. Okay. Don't, don't be, because okay. a lot okay. of times we're compensating for our insecurities no, no, no. What by Chuka, using big things to cover if, up for what we are lacking. take Chuka's personal experience, that's where I'm with Chuka him. is not saying that, oh, I had this small car and um, that's all I had and I so much loved. He said, look, I had these big cars but I had this small one, and then I appreciated this small one because I had a big one. Mm. And, and, so, and then it gave him opportunity to compare. Mm. Oh, this one is for consuming, this one. And for this one, people will look at me. For this one, people won't look at me. Mm. So if, as a government, or as an institution, if you provide a feed, a level playing feed, for everybody to aspire, there are some people who would say, I'm OK where I am. I don't want to go beyond this. That's where they want to be. There are some people who will say, no, I want to get to the top. When they finally get to the top, they'll see that say, there's nothing I, at the top. Exactly. So, but give them the opportunity. No, no, we're, we're forgiving opportunities. To strive but why don't we even also get there. It does the not right mean, values. It does not so that mean that they are being covetous. No, no, but no, by what I'm saying is that you're there, there. You should still, you can still also carry along the values. That all of us agree that, you know, value system. Mm. We have all agreed here. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is, everybody, you have your own. In, in the, I have been somewhere where I got to the office. The man asked me, what car are you driving? I said, one small car. He said, OK, just find somewhere to park and come in. And I said, I'm looking for a place to park. He stepped out and said, which car? I'm not seeing a small car. I said, I drive a Benz. He said, I use that big car. I said, yes, yeah, hello, okay, let them open the gate for you to come in. Yeah. That's and the this problem. Is somebody, so you, no, 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 you don't understand. This is somebody <laughs> who have been on this this transaction with quickly. Quickly, the rookie. They can't even afford it because they want the gate to be open for them. Mm -hmm. No, no, the no, 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 that's where, not what I'm, where, that's you know, not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying. And they cannot really afford certain status no. stuff just because they want to look like they have arrived. That's a they, different they scenario. And borrow. But for and this again, one, I'm going to negotiate again, a transaction of six million naira with him. <laughs> and, and so I get there. Ordinarily, this was a man who was arguing with me on the phone. Ah, no, 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 lawyer, ah, no, 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 no. But only for me to get there, he looked at me, sized me up and said, ah, oh, no, this man probably would have seen 10 million. <laughs> and so he no longer argued with me. But there are some places I'm going to, I would, because I know parking would be a problem, I would take a taxi or take a bus mm. because I also want to see and relate with you know, people. Mm. And, and so, but that does not mean that I do not appreciate people who are driving smaller cars. Smaller cars. Mm. But That's where my, the value my system own point, gets yes, My own point is, people... don't say because you, know, you drive, a, you love a smaller car, so everybody should just drive No, 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 we're no, just no, saying, no, no, don't no. attach That's value to big That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. Don't what? attach value to big yes. or small. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm basically just Mark, saying that. Mark Zuckerberg, yes. by the way, drives a Honda Civic, I hear. Uh -huh. He loves the car. Yeah, the Honda know, Civic so, yeah. is cool. I think it's just two ways. I'm just trying to say that the man who can't afford much, don't worry. What you're driving is actually very, very good. And then the man who can afford more can actually... All that you see a man decide. driving small does not mean he probably it, 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 doesn't have co more. Correct, correct, all. correct. So like I said earlier, your thoughts are only personal until you share them. And we appreciate you sharing them with us. So here, uh, Black Sun Horizons 44 Black Horus hmm, is provoked by David's advocacy you are not a victim, and says, yes, indeed, there are predators and those, that, and those they prey on, victims. Anyone who claims the richest continent on the planet is poor and undeveloped solely due to Africans is asleep, unaware, naive. I could actually debunk everything and all things claimed myself, but it would be too much time, and frankly, I don't have the energy or desire this time. Dr. Amos Wilson can do it better, far more elegantly. Whereas, Al B. K. Man, Ados, there are so many names here, it is disingenuous to focus on issues inconsequential to Africa's survival while the, while the rug is being pulled out from beneath the feet of its citizens, China debt trap and religious culture wars. What first world country has reached its status from global warfare, welfare or foreign loans? None, not one. You may think that China successfully capitalized on America through awarding of most favored nation status in 2001, 
receiving the most favorable trade advantages compared to all other foreign nations across the world. The ballots are not all in, involving China's national aid from America. We must see how everything works, works out following the present China-US trade embargo. Africa will never benefit from the lofty China loan investments. This is obvious to everyone, everyone but the African politician and the powerless poor majority who mistakenly entrust their lives. Thank you, Black Swan and Al BK Man, for your feedback. We may not agree, but it broadens the conversation. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustv.com forward slash the Advocate, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, I'm agreeing with Chuka in saying it's good to engage. The dialogue between leadership and the led has always been a volatile one that swings on trust, just like every other relationship. When trust is lost. It saddens me to see that amidst all the headlines of probes and lootings, and this didn't start today, whether of the NDDC, which allegedly casts a shadow as far as the National Assembly, the EFCC, Magu Malami Saga, or even queries as to indemnity for defaulting on acquired loans. Our leadership don't seem to realize that the key connecting factor between the headlines is the departure of trust. Instead, arguments are made as to how bridges, railways, railway projects, and even skyscrapers have been built for us, and yet we remain ungrateful and complaining. Ask any wife who suspects her husband of cheating, whether well, the husband is finally taking responsibility for a few necessary and some unnecessary household requirements ever placated her. I wouldn't know, so don't ask me. However, her response may go something like this. If he likes, he should Kukuma not sort out the home front. She'll be wearing this together. The problem with this comparison, however, is that our leaders cannot even boast of being in it together with us. We recently read of our president's beloved nephew, Maman Daura, being flown to the UK, once borders would allow, in a private jet, no less. The first lady returning from health tourism in Dubai with a charge to our healthcare providers to upgrade the home care services. <laughs> no kidding. Trust points to the language of love, care, and even respect. Where this is lacking, there is a communication breakdown, and things will predictably fall apart. Take the recent examples of Lebanon and Mali as a case in point. It doesn't matter that you insist you're governing in the people's best interests. The truth is that the people are not children and are capable of engaging in a dialogue concerning what is really in their best interest. They're not blind to your hypocrisies or deaf to your double speak. The contract of trust should be carefully addressed and nurtured wherever there's a partnership between the leaders and the led in our homes, places of work, and yes, in governance. Systems of accountability and engagement should be built in and regularly appraised from inception. Parents, don't assume to lord it over your children just because they aren't as mature as you. Begin to develop the language of self-determination and engagement in them, since charity begins at home. CEOs, bosses, and management, employees are not tools to achieve your aims. They're human beings with a will and emotions and you'll discover that they are most effective when they commit to your vision with their soul. So be careful not to trample on the same by being inconsiderate. Those in or aspiring to go into governance, the people are the same as you, merely on the other side of the divide, not lesser. In fact, it would do you good to see them as more worthy. That way, the language of service and care will shape your actions. Trust cannot be bought by the tangible, such as bridges, railways, skyscrapers, or even stomach infrastructure. We must go back to the fundamentals of nurturing trust through the intangibles of accountability and engagement. Back to earning trust through the sincere language of love and respect. Other than this, we can only wait till the voice of protest reaches a critical mass, since apart from trust, the center cannot hold. Um, almost similar to what we were talking about with Chuka's advocacy. Uh, but um, my only point of a departure is that uh, trust to a very large extent can be won 
with uh, some of this infrastructure. I'm just going to say, yeah. yeah. Mm, trust yeah. can be one with, because the essence of gov governance, like you are, are agreed, is uh, to provide some of these basic things. And then failure to provide them, you know, breach the trust that the people repose in you. And, and so when you begin, when the people now see you, you know, go back to providing these things, it's like, ah, that was what, that, I, that's why I tell people that APC today should thank Fashola. What led to the emergence of APC was the good works of Fashola's government in Lagos. That people were like, oh no, a governor could actually do this. And so that trust, people started paying taxes voluntarily. Mm -hmm. and, and so you now saw that people opted for that party, ACN. Oh, since we, they, they have you know, a performing governor in Lagos, let us have similar people in, in governance. So gradually you started winning trust. And so for me, those of our politicians out there, when you make a promise, the moment you break that promise is a breach of trust. And so your promise is your manifestos during the election. And when you say, I will build roads, don't build one and now ask me to you know, thank you. Or you pay salaries and say they are dividends of democracy. These are ways of building trust. And when we gradually do that, you'll be shocked. Nigerians are very easy people you know, to our, our peace. Mm. They will sing your praises to high heavens. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's true. Um, so okay, it's very interesting. Okay, let me just jump in. Uh, okay, um, let, her, about let her do the husband and, and yes, respecting wife that. cheating. <laughs> and for me, it's, it's not really strictly true because you can actually buy love. I mean, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, had this case in Colorado. And um, he, his wife um, said nothing. And the next time we saw our photo of, she had a huge rock on her finger. And of course, um, you saw everything play out, and he was the best husband thereafter. So actually, you can buy trust to some extent. Now, if you look at um, what's happening in the United States today, there's an election going on. And then um, the, the president who said he did everything in his manifesto, and the obvious lies, again, we'll watch it, see how the election turns out. But to some extent, um, what um, the people are saying is correct. You can actually buy um, people's trust by what you do, because money is money, you know? So what you invest in shows me where your heart is. And um, so if everything is working well in the home, some, some people may even turn the blind eye to what's going outside, um, on outside, as long as we are all comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my, my own take from this is you definitely put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. If the um, first lady is coming from Dubai and telling us that uh, our healthcare system doesn't work, it's an indictment to her because they're in government. And why should she go to Dubai and first defend this um, um, clinic in, in Astro Rock? Anyway, um, bottom line is put your money where your mouth is. Trust will come. Mm. I think also what it is is that when you promise something, uh, keep doing it. I think yeah. another problem with Nigeria is they promise you a railway, they buy second-hand trains. <laughs> you break the trust <laughs> while <laughs> trying to <laughs> get it. What you should be doing is basically buying good trains that look like the trains in Venice, supply them, even if they're only two, start like that, and you win the trust fully. They so say they're not second-hand trains. So I, I hope they're not, but they look very second-hand to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't prove it, but they look very second-hand to me. And very, I, I think, on, and very I, I, on contemporary. I think, That's the best way to put it. Yes, they, uh, they don't look like they were made today. But at least to some extent, <laughs> we are seeing trends. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think there's any clear cut answer to this. Oh, Cro yes. Trust could be relative. For instance, a politician that is sponsored by the party, his loyalty, trust to be to the party, bankrolled. might not necessarily that is bankrolled. I understand. So it may not necessarily <laughs> be in the interest of the general populace. Yes. So as as far as you're taking care of your yes. constituency, you can be removed you're, from office you're fine. From not, you understand? Uh, because we've seen uh, we've seen that play out with uh Edu. No, Lagos State. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. You yeah, understand? Yeah. So yeah, yeah this, the man was seen to be doing, but because doing well, he did yes. not speak to a certain constituency, he was removed. Yeah. You know, well, so I, I guess maybe I'm going back to the good old fashioned. Sorry, I, I should really <laughs> hold my peace on this one because I had the floor. Mm. But I, I'm going back to good old fashioned because what what I see is connecting between what uh, Libros and Chuka said, and to some extent, even you, Ruki, is that 
that, that action of itself, buying someone a car or a rock on their finger, will not breed trust. All it no. means is that I've held you accountable for your cheating. But the thing that breeds trust is you're keeping your word. So if you yeah. promise me something and you do it, that's the trust. But go, trying to somehow cover my eye, if I know you're a dodgy person, you're a dodgy person, it doesn't matter how many railways no, you No, for you. If you're looting, no, for and you. you give me small railway, I'm still watching no, you from the corner of my you. eye. for you. Yeah, that's and right. I'm still no, watching that's what, you. That's what Seydu is saying. For you, you know, it's bigger than that. But for some people, all it's they need yet. to buy their trust is just do little. So, so why is it that we're still struggling to trust our government despite all these other things? Even while you're struggling, there are some people that will die for this same government. Oh they will my. tell you, look, <laughs> this is the best that we've got. <laughs> I need to meet them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, talking about challenges with engagement and accountability. After the break, Seydu raises a topical case in point. Over to you, Seydu. Yes, Ekene's advocacy seems to have pointed to where I'm going next. Where engagement is politicized, there is a, there's bound to be a fallout. MBA versus El Rufai, the fallout. The way you treat your leaders at home is how they will be perceived among the committee of nations. The resultant effect is the way the rest of the world would treat your citizens as we have seen with Nigeria. You cannot give your child a bad name and expect others to treat the child right. I'm not by any means denying us the privilege of holding our leaders accountable, rather advocating that we do so in a way that do not sell ourselves cheap before the rest of the world. The recent name and shame of Governor El Rufai threw a badly orchestrated invite, an uninvite event, though the body has denied that that was their intention, has elicited mixed reaction from within the NBA and outside. The governor has been accused of assaulting and intimidating lawyers and has no regards for court rulings, and most importantly, his poor management of the crisis in Kaduna. The governor was invited by the Technical Conference Planning Committee of the NBA as a keynote speaker at the annual general conference of the NBA 2020. The theme is stepping and stepping, and the question is, who is a Nigerian? the debate on Nigerian identity, on the national identity, with a special session focusing on the topic, am I a Nigerian? A debate on national identity, the indigenship citizenship conundrum. El Rufai is one governor who has had to deal with the issue of identity crisis, especially in the southern part of the state where he governs. Beside, he has the intellectual capital and the knowledge of the national questions being addressed. His ability in this regard is beyond question, and he has confidence to articulate his views. You may not like El Rufai's attitude and his lack of tact, but you cannot question his ability as a diligent and first-class intellect. A cursory look at some of the other invited guests will leave you wondering how they passed NBA integrity test. High-profile high cases involving prominent Nigerians always seems like a jamboree with the accused adoring regalia as if they are attending political rallies, knowing full well that the case, more often than not, will end up falling or failing on technical grounds. There is a need for complete overhaul of the criminal justice system and its complete independence if the sought respect must be earned. This will also ensure that the right people are voted into power as the judiciary will guarantee equity and fairness in dispensing justice. Judici the judiciary, they say, is the last hope of the common man. Um, um, I've been waiting, <laughs> <laughs> waiting eventually <laughs> for this topic, <laughs> right from when you, you know, see him. I, I laugh when I hear people say, oh, Erufa is the most competent person to deal with this topic. And uh, the same people that are saying Erufa wasn't given fair hearing. We are the same very people that we are very happy when Okojo Ewela's, um, was it a honorary doctorate degree, was withdrawn by a university in America without listening to Okojo Ewela, simply because Nigerians felt she served in a government that was corrupt. The same people who were happy when Desiani's honorary doctorate was, was withdrawn without listening to her are the same people complaining today and politicizing the issue of invite and uninvite. A man invites you to his house for dinner. And then his children are complaining, we don't want to see this man in our house, or some of the children. And they took a vote. And at the end of the majority says, we don't want to see him. He says, oh, please, 
for certain reasons, I would want to withdraw that invitation. You say, ah, no, 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 no. You must give him right of fair hearing before you withdraw such invitation. Nobody is saying, if you had invited Erufai and refused him to speak, then it would have been a problem. But now you say, please, before the conference, some of my members don't, want to. don't, they wrote a petition and the vote was taken on it by the trustees and the organizers, uh, by the Congress. And they felt, look, we don't want you to come. What's the big deal about uh, it? It can be a Very big odd. deal. The, well, no, let me no, finish no, quickly. Okay, okay. The issue is not whether Erufai can speak to the issue. The issue is the fact that it's a gathering of lawyers. Correct. And some people had said, we don't no, we don't want him. Yeah. And also, lastly, I would have said, OK, also, uninvite others because the test you use to judge Erufai, they also have a taint of it. Mm. But unfortunately, these same people will tell you, when you say Buhari is selective in his, um, in his pursuit of anti-corruption, they say, well, at least let him even pursue some persons. Mm. Mm. We start from there. Okay. Okay. Morrissey, who was disinvited in 2008 because of his antecedent with the 2007 election. Mm. The heavens uh, two wrongs don't make it right, but let me jump in quickly mm. uh, and say, uh, you know, I, 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 I agree to some extent that, but my problem with this is, is there no procedure? Before they invite him, can they not find a more orderly way of getting the feel? Because it's, there, it's there's no, something... There is a, a there's planning committee. And so the there's... planning committee rules out, these are the people who want so to why invite. Don't you, since you, and since then, you can be influenced and by then the when people. You circulate, yeah. Yeah. When you circulate, whoever feels aggrieved at the planning stage, mm. after they had sent out... So they, the, shouldn't they shouldn't send out the invitation. Send out the no, invite. because what happens is right. the planning committee is saddled with that responsibility. After they have done that, they report back to the general house. Well, it, it's, it's open at that to, point it's that open the general house is... Because no, what, no, no well, listen, listen. Let, let me out. make this statement anyway. Mm. I think that there's something... I'm, I'm, I'm not against it in total, but I'm, I'm saying that the, there is a name and shame element to this. Because by the time you've made it public that you invited him, some people are gloating that they have won it's against him. Same way and, but, 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 will withdraw a PhD wait, that they've given wait. to so you. I don't think it's completely no. apolitical. No. Leave it. But let me get to my point, just like you got to yours. My, my point is, I don't like the way it was done. It, it was done as though they were trying to shame him. But I'm happy with the consequence. Simply because the Southern Kaduna people, they have been crying out for some attention. And finally, because of this ego that Aerofire has and how it has been shunned or slighted by this thing, we're now going to get some attention for that. So for me, I don't mind. I, I'm not saying that the end justifies the means, because I don't think it's something I want them to perpetuate. But in this instance, because these people are finally getting some attention, you see how now they've had a peace meeting, let there be no more bloodshed. And, and you know, so I don't think it's, and, and my own also preference is that all these other people, whether Wiki or OBJ, they should also disinvite them. Because they, they satisfy that criteria. That's my own position on it. Let me just quickly add. Or on invite them. We should not lose sight of, yeah, I, I picked El Rufai, but I'm talking about our leaders. Be careful how you rubbish our <laughs> no, leaders. No, because they've already rubbished us. No, I don't think... Uh, no, wait, hold on. Leaders. Leaders. They, they are rulers. They are rulers. They are rulers. They are No, no, they are, they are rulers. Say you, say you, too late. Yeah. Yeah. It's too late. They've rubbished us. The Quero Madu... The Quero Madu was unfortunately... That is the point I'm trying to make. The horse has They've rubbished us. The Quero Madu was beaten in Germany, and we're happy. No, no, it's too late. It's too late. We should not be happy No, there's nothing we can do about that. The leaders have rubbished us. When you come home, behave well. We should not... That is what I'm against. No, no, it's too late. I believe very strongly that the MBA, the Nigerian Bar Association, is, like you said, the last voice and hope for the common man. And so they must be held above board. First of all, procedures are really, really important. They need to show us what to do. How can you in a house decide to um, have a committee that didn't report properly and then do invitations and take them out? For me, that shows a lot of flaws inside that MBA. But apart from that, Look at what you're trying to portray, the Nigerians. Are, are you trying to tell me that these, are, these leaders are the examples that we want Nigerians to be when we know all the problems with each and every one of these leaders? Like the Kenneth said, let's disinvite all of them and start the whole process again. Let people who have real track Edgy. records, integrity, even they could be in, you know, foreigners, whoever we think they are, come and show us what it is to be, have an honest walk and have some kind of idea. There's so many examples of people that we can choose amongst Nigerians to come and give us a talk and tell us, that, you know, what their own struggles are. Well, 
The end always seems to come too soon on The Advocate. However, The Advocate continues on our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to plustv.com forward slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on the station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye-bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.